So in this mini-series, we are going to talk about things that we should consider when choosing our next racket. If you've been following this channel, you'll know that I have gone through the recent process of selecting my new racket and I will reveal that in due time. But there are about five things that you need to consider, maybe even more, when it comes to your choice of racket. At the end of the day, it's a personal choice, but I'm just going to go explain and go through a few factors that need to be considered before we make that big choice. Without further ado, let's get into this topic. So the next factor to consider when it comes to choosing your head racket is the balance point. So what exactly is a balance point? Well, it is where the majority of the weight of the racket is distributed. So we got three types of balance points with respect to squash rackets. First one is a head heavy racket. Secondly, we're looking at head light rackets. And thirdly, we're looking at an evenly distributed racket weight. First and foremost, let's look at head heavy rackets. Head heavy rackets, as the name suggests, means that most of the weight is distributed towards the head of the racket in terms of balance points. What this means is that for players which have a very fluid swing, they will be able to generate a lot more momentum with a bit of mass behind the ball when striking the ball. With a head heavy type of racket, a well time shot means that there's less effort that needs to be put into the shot in order to generate a lot of power. So you will find a lot of juniors as well as senior players which might not have the strength and power yet developed in their muscles and want to hit the ball quite nicely would tend and drift towards a head heavy racket. It's not to say that seniors, senior players as well as juniors cannot use head light rackets but you will find it's a very good beginner racket and most of your beginner rackets that you would buy you would find to be or would tend to be head heavy. It doesn't mean that you do not get professional rackets which are not head heavy. In fact there are entire range of squash rackets which are head heavy. A lot of the Dunlop ones and even the rackets used by the world number two at the moment, Ali Firak, is actually head heavy in its um, weight distribution. So, in terms of head heavy rackets, as mentioned, since that you need to have, since you need to have a very fluid type of swing, and your racket preparation needs to be quite good, it will suit players which have very good technique, are looking for a lot of power in their shots, and might not be able to generate it from either their muscles or their take or, or you know their swing. So a head heavy racket can be used by anyone, but you'll see that the type of style that you have, your approach and your physical characteristics might shift you between head heavy, head light and evenly distributed rackets. As mentioned, I think I said Ali Farag always uses head heavy rackets. I think Miguel Rodriguez on his cannonball also uses a head heavy racket. Marwan Al Shabagi, from what I understand, also uses a head heavy racket. So there are a lot of professional players that also deviate or move towards head heavy rackets and as I mentioned it's a matter of preference. Okay the next type of racket is a head light racket. As the name suggests most of the weight is actually distributed towards the handle of the racket instead of the head so making it a head light racket. What this does it enables players to flick the ball more often and you'll find a lot of players which, like, which are very wristy or like to flick balls instead of control their swing with a fluid swing will opt for a head light racket because this gives them a lot of ability to maneuver their racket just before they take a shot. This also suits a lot of players that have very short swing. So if you have, if you and your technique obviously have a very big swing, maybe you, you would shift towards an evenly distributed racket or a heavy, head heavy racket. So racket preparation is very important and some players who either do not believe or do not have that in their arsenal or do not play that way will deviate and shift towards headlight rackets because that enables them to get their racket up very early since most of the weight is distributed towards the handle instead of the head. A lot of players that find that they like this type of racket are characterized or have a very aggressive playing style and are very lively on court. So they like to change direction very quickly and have a lot of deception. So that's where you're gonna have a headlight racket which basically suits your game plan if it is part of your game plan. Last but not least, we've got an evenly distributed racket. So as the name suggests, there's an equal amount of weight distributed between the head and the handle. And I think to make it simple, if you're looking for a combination of the two, which is, you know, what I've mentioned before, in a head light racket and a head heavy racket, you'll probably go towards evenly distributed racket. It's not to say that players shouldn't try these different type of rackets, but you'll find an uh, evenly distributed racket will be used by players who like to switch up their styles of play. So they might like to play a very aggressive type of game but then afterwards they want to play a more fluid and controlled type game. So they can actually switch in between how they would hold their racket either a lot higher up 
or a lot lower down if they want to change in between playing a more aggressive style versus a more fluid and relaxed type style where they're trying to generate a lot of power. And that's about it for your balance points. You only have those type of rackets which are choices at the end of the day. So that's about it for the balance points of squash rackets and we'll talk about the next point in the next video. Thanks for watching this episode in the mini series about what you need to consider when choosing your next racket. If you have any comments, suggestions, or corrections that need to be made uh, for the people in the community that are interested in picking out a new racket that would fare them best on the squash court, please put a comment down below and let's have a discussion about it. Take care. Cheers.